I am right now at uh, Pioneer Square in the downtown area of uh, Portland and uh, it is 2.06 in the afternoon and right behind me is just uh, pretty much everybody that's out here. There's not too many people. Um, if, you go, if you look, there's the Pioneer Square. They're doing some construction over there and um, just taking the camera around. There's not a whole lot and there's the KGW, the studio on the square. And uh, right there is the uh, new building that they're uh, building. It is uh, not yet completed, but looks like they're they're adding the outside, and um, it's going to look exactly like the rest of the buildings that are around here. Um, today we're not going to talk about much. We're only going to take five minutes. Uh, I'm probably just going to introduce the book. Let's talk about God, and um, that's about it. We're not going to do a whole lot. Uh, this is the sermons that I preached last year concerning uh, the attributes of God. I might make mention of it, but other than that, there won't be too much uh, done. Anyway, uh, we're going to read out of Romans 1 and uh, see what the Word of God has to say. Father, I pray for this afternoon, and I pray that uh, those people who can hear my voice um, would take heed to the word that is spoken. And um, this I do in the name of Jesus. Five, five, seven minutes. Good afternoon. The name is Kevin Duclaren. And I just want to take five minutes of your time, maybe five or six. As we are exiting winter and entering and entering into spring, we forget something that this is all the work of God. As we as we move from one season to another, sort of like the season of life. As we go from winter, winter to spring, spring to summer, summer to fall, and fall to winter, we forget that this is the work of God. We enjoy the summer sun, the winter snow, the fallen leaves, and we forget that God is behind the entire thing. Some of us get married. Others of us start families with children. And we completely forget that there is a God in heaven, hidden from our eyes, that is doing all of these things. We get so caught up with the daily living that we forget the simplicity of just remembering that we have a sovereign creator who is doing all these things in the background. So I want to take five minutes and read something from the book of Romans. Paul says in the book of Romans, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Since what is known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. When you go through the Bible, you can look up several verses that talks about God and the attributes of God, that is the character of God. Now why should this be important to us? Why should we care about the character of our God? Because God has something against us. He has wrath against us. There is judgment against us. Because of sin. And God says that He is angry because when we look at creation, we overlook the fact that He is there. And when you look at creation, you see his invisible attributes. You see his eternal power. In other words, you look at the sun, but you don't even think about the fact of how much power it takes to uphold the sun. You look at the trees, and you overlook the fact 
how much power does it take to grow a tree, grow the leaves on a tree, grow the fruits on a tree, and to keep the tree standing for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. We overlook all these things which demonstrate the power of God, which shows us who God is. So God says His invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature is seen through what has been made and it has been overlooked. As a result of it, man has lost respect for God. Man has said in his heart, there is no God. And the result of it is that he turns us over to a life of sin. So that we are reminded when we see our lives going down the drain. When we are standing over the coffins of our loved ones who have died. When we see tragedy, it is then that we turn to who? To God. The God that we ignored in creation. The God whose invisible attributes we overlooked. The God who at all the four seasons we never give thanks to. It is when tragedy comes, when sin has destroyed us, that's when we turn to God. And God's wrath is kindled against us. So today, beginning in spring, I want to just to remind you that God is love. According to 1 John 4, God is spirit. According to John 4, 24, God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. God is omniscient. That means he knows everything. God is omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. God is the consuming fire. I don't think I need to explain that. God is merciful. He bestows mercy on those who need it. God is just. He demands a righteous judgment against sin and wickedness. God is sovereign. He has authority over everything. Even the hairs in our heads. God is triune. That means He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is invisible. He cannot be seen with the naked eye. And God is forgiving. When we sin, He forgives us when we repent of our sins. The Bible says, Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to all men everywhere that they should repent. Because He has fixed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. Through a man whom He has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising Him from the dead. And you know Him as Jesus Christ. So God wants us to repent of ignoring Him, of pretending that He's not there. And instead, He wants us to pay attention to what the Word has to say about Him. So I've taken the liberty to help out in this situation and to produce a book like all other books that have been written by authors concerning God. The title of the book is Let's Talk About This God. What God? The God who is love. The God who is spirit. The God who is omnipresent. The God who is omnipotent. The God who is a consuming fire. The God who is merciful and just. The God who is sovereign and triune. The God who is invisible and forgiving. Is there any way to know this God? Yes, through Jesus Christ, His Son. You simply exercise faith. Faith in the fact that Christ died on the cross. Faith in the fact that you can be forgiven for the sin that God has poured out on us as a result of what? Dishonoring Him. Ignoring Him. And acting as if He doesn't exist says the scriptures. How difficult is it to live in a country as rich as ours and to overlook 
the simple fact that we have a God who is trying to get our attention. The blowing wind, the nice weather, all of these things God has done. But is that enough for us to turn to God in prayer? Is that enough for us to say, thank you, Lord? Is that enough for us to take it into consideration that God wants a relationship with us and that He wants us to know who He is? Some of you may shrug and say, you know what, I don't need this religion. Others of you may say, you know what, you have a point. But ultimately, whether I say anything or not, guess what is? Guess what God is waiting for? He's waiting for your response. Not because I concocted this entire thing here, but without it, God is waiting for your response. Because you are His creation. Because you are perfectly and wonderfully made. Because when you were in your mother's womb, and He was forming your brain, and He was forming your skeleton, and He was forming your heart, and He was forming your hands and your feet, you had no say so in it. But now that you are out of your mother's valley, and you're walking freely, speaking freely, it doesn't even seem as if it really matters where you came from or who made you. You know, you try to drown the whole aspect of a creator by getting busy and doing whatever it is that you need to do in life. But forgetting how you were formed and shaped and made and kept alive and grown for the last 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. You've forgotten how you've changed from infancy to fully grown, to a fully grown person. That's the reality of being human. But it's also the reality of being a sinner who overlooks the fact that we have a God who is beckoning our attention. We look down on religious people and we say, Oh man, nobody wants your religion. Man, shut up with all that garbage. Now imagine if God says, I'm not going to create you anymore. I'm going to have her abort you. Now, wouldn't that hurt to think that God decided to abort us and not to form us? But instead, He decided to invite us into this thing called life. He decided to, to, to bring us in to make us a part of His society, to make us a part of His world, to give us the gift of life, to open our eyes and to open our minds and to help us understand. But we overlook all of that. And so I want to encourage you this summer, either get yourself a Bible that will teach you about God, buy yourself a copy of this book or any book that teaches on the attributes of God, but settle your case with God ASAP. Settle your case with God before your time is up. Settle your case with God because you don't know how many years He's given you. Settle your case with God before the days of evil come. Father, I want to pray in the name of Jesus that you encourage these people to draw near to you. And to make it a point this summer, or this spring, to buy a Bible, or a copy of Let's Talk About God, or a book that talks about your attributes. Lord, I pray for the salvation of these people, for the forgiveness of their sins and mine, and that they will draw near to you, and learn of you, and that you are a loving God who forgives sin, and that you want to know them, and you want them to know you. And you don't want them to live life without you. Because what is the point of life without ever knowing your Creator? And so, Father, I pray for this city. And I pray for this continent. That all over the world, we as a people would have a desire to know you. Paul says in the scriptures, I have lost all things for the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. That's how important it is for us to know God. Better that you lose your health. Better that you lose your wealth like Job did. Better that you lose your family like Job did. Better that you lose everything 
and walk away with a biblical understanding and knowledge of God. Because if you die without knowing who your Creator is, you're going to be just like the man in Luke 16 who wept when he found himself in Hades and said to Abraham, Father Abraham, can you dip your finger into that cold water and to put it on my tongue? And Abraham says, no child, in your days, you lived out your riches gaily, but now you're in a place of torment. And the man says, well, can you send to my brothers somebody from the dead to warn them of this place? And Abraham says, no. They have Moses and the prophets. And how many of us disdain the Jewish religion and disdain the Jewish God and disdain Moses and the prophets? How many of us say there is no God? I'm an American. I do it all American. My counsel and my encouragement to you. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Learn of God and do not go into the grave without knowing your Creator. It will be the worst mistake you ever made. God bless you.